What's up everybody, it's Rafi from Zerv, and I got another great lesson for you this week. So we've been talking about it a lot and it's for a good reason, Flexbox kicks ass. Floats and clear fix are just hacks and you don't have to use them anymore. So the thing is, Flexbox has great browser support, the learning curve is really small, and better yet, Foundation has a bunch of helper classes that get you using Flexbox right away. We also have an upcoming advanced foundation class, which we talk about Flexbox and a lot more. It really is the fastest way to learn. So we're gonna hop into a demo and check out some of these Flexbox helper classes and how they'll save you time and headache. But before we do that, make sure you hit subscribe up above so you don't miss the next lesson and that way the Yeti can get a new set of galoshes. Let's check it out. All right. So we're gonna start with some of the Flexbox helper classes that control horizontal alignment of children. So what we need to do is start with a flex parent. So as you can see, we have this outer wrapping div here, and inside of it we have three divs. So left thing, middle thing, and right thing with the classes here. So these divs are considered our children and right now, because there's no Flexbox being applied to them or, or any kind of display property in particular, they're just going to stack on top of each other, as you can see here, and then be 100% width. So I've added a background color on some of these divs just so you can see uh, them clearly. So if I'm going to now make this outer wrapper a flex container, so I want to give it the display flex property, I can use the foundation helper class flex container. Okay, so once this becomes a flex container, you can see that what it does is it makes all of its children, so these divs here with these classes left thing, middle thing, right thing, now they're going to be horizontally aligned next to each other. And they're only gonna take up the width that they need for the content inside of them. So that is the flex basis property and set to shrink. So that's pretty much the default. So what we're going to do now is control the children and move them around. So let's say we want these three items to be in the middle of the container. So we're going to use the align center class so this is one of the Flexbox helper classes and it basically does justify content center. And so now you can see all three blocks are centered together in the middle. But what if we want to space them apart from each other evenly? So we can also use the align spaced class. So align spaced will take the spacing on the left and the right of each item and make them even. So you can see that there's the even amount of spacing on the left of the first block here as the right of the first block, the left of the second block, the right of the, the second block, and so on. So now it's spaced evenly around. This is using the justify content space around property. So Let's go ahead and make these spaced apart completely. So we can use the align justify class. So align justify will push the different elements away from each other so they're spaced towards the edges. If you have any middle items, they will uh, center themselves. So if we were to, for example, add another element in here, you can see that they still space each other apart out to the edges, but then the middle two will space away from each other as well. Kind of like opposing magnets. All right, so another example is using Flexbox helper classes for vertical alignment. So what we have here is a row with a callout. So the callout is a component foundation that just creates a box with some padding and a border. So inside of that, I have a few things. So let's take a look. We have an image, which you see here. Then we have a div with a class of info and it's going to contain uh, the name. So in this H5 Darth Vader, and then a P tag with 
44,061 subscribers. Okay, so those are stacked on top of each other because these are block level elements. Okay, and then this div with a class of status, subscribed, and then an icon. So all of these are stacked on top of each other because they're just regular divs right now. They have no display property. So what we're gonna do is make the callout a flex parent by adding the flex container class. So if we add the flex container class, you could see that something happens. So when you make a parent uh, display flex, what it wants to do is make its children uh, height 100% as much as possible. So this definitely affects images and, and then uh, other containers as well. So this image is trying to go height 100% and all these other elements here now can sit side by side, which is nice thing about the flex property is that by default, all the children will sit side by side. Okay, so now we're going to fix this behavior and we want to vertically align all these elements inside of its container. So we'll use the align middle class. So we have some options available to us. We can do align top, align. So align top looks like this, align bottom, and then you can see that everything is lined up at the bottom, but we want to do it in the middle. So there you go. Okay, vertically aligned in the middle. Now, it's an important thing to note anytime you're trying to vertically align content that you make sure you reset or remove any of the margin bottoms on things. So uh, paragraph tags, header tags, they typically will have margin bottom on them. So make sure you remove that, otherwise your vertical alignment might not look right. And then if you do see that, then you know what it is. It's, it's usually margin bottom on something. So especially uh, buttons and inputs, things like that will have margin bottom. Okay, so this is great. Now we can use one of the existing helper classes to kind of spread these items apart. So we might use the align spaced attribute or class which we just covered and so now we can space these all evenly apart so what this is going to do is make sure that the spacing on the left and the right of every single element is the same amount and instead we might do justify because that might look better so align justify there you go that kind of looks a little bit better now we have some even spacing there to go beyond this, if we want to hand control the sizing of the child elements, we can use classes on the child elements to set their sizes. So we're going to remove the align justify class that we just added. And you see that everything just becomes its natural width and they're all lined up next to each other towards the left. So what we're going to do is take a look at some of the default properties of flex children. So we have a flex container here. That means this, this container is display flex. So it's children are flex children. So by default, flex children are going to only take up the amount of space that's needed for the content inside of them. So this image tag will only take up the size of the image, this text, here, Darth Vader and the subscribers will only take up the width of the content inside of it. And if it had any padding, it would include that as well. So that's the shrink property of Flexbox, and that's a default. So what we're gonna do is override that and make these some different widths. So maybe we want the info and the status section, so these two here in the middle, to be even width and then take up all the remaining space. So we have some Flexbox helper classes to do that. So we'll do flex child, and then we'll make this auto. So if we do that on just the one, what this does is it makes the 
this div here take up all this extra remaining width, okay? And if we apply the same class onto the status div, you can see that they now will share the same amount of space. So if we inspect this, you can see this a little bit more clearly here. So you can see that this div for Darth Vader is taking up that much width. And if we drop down to the other div here, it's also taking up the same amount of width. So now they're, they're both equal width and they're taking up the remaining amount of space that's left. So that's pretty cool and it's looking a lot better. So now we're going to take a look at some real world applications using cards. Alrighty, so we have this card here that is pretty close, but it needs a little bit of work. So there's this product title section with some rating stars underneath and then a price. But we want this to look a little bit better and the price is supposed to be off to the right. If we move down to these buttons, it would be nice if these buttons actually fill the entire width of the container and this buy button was a little bit bigger. So we're gonna address that as well. And then down to the specifications toggle, this arrow is supposed to be off to the right. So we're gonna fix all of this with Flexbox helpers. So the first thing we wanna look at is this card divider. So this card divider is what is containing this product title and price and rating stars. So if we look at the code, there's two elements that are direct children of the card divider. So one of them is the card product rating class. So what I'm highlighting here. And the other one is this span. Great, so we have two elements. We can make them spread apart from each other to each edge of the container. So we're gonna do that with our Flexbox helpers. So first thing we need to do is make this card divider a flex parent. So we'll add the flex container class to this element. So once we do that, you could see that now the two elements that are direct children of it are sitting side by side. So one of them is the card product rating and the other one is the span for the card product price. So now we want to push them apart from each other, so we'll use the align justify class. Great, so the align justify class takes care of that. Now it's pushed apart and it's looking a lot better. We actually also want the price to be at the bottom, so align to the bottom of this, of this container. So we can actually use one of our helper classes, so we'll set this to align bottom. So align bottom does align items flex end, and there it is, it pushes the content down to the bottom. So maybe in the past you might have used padding top, or margin top, or position absolute or relative to achieve this, but you don't need to anymore. Uh, these helper classes take care of that with Flexbox. All right, so this is looking good. We're gonna move on to the buttons and set those up. So let's find our buttons. So our buttons are being wrapped with a div. We have a button that has this icon in it, an anchor tag that takes you to a compare page, and then a button that adds the item to the cart or is buy. And what we actually want to do is make this button fill the width of the container. So we already have a class of Flex Child Grow. This is one of the foundation helper classes for Flexbox. What it does is it makes the item grow to fill the remaining width of the container. And this actually does a Flex Basis 1. So what we're going to do to make this work is that we're gonna make the parent container a flex parent. So we'll add the flex container class onto that. 
And there you go. Works like a charm. So now we can control the individual sizes of the children by using these helper classes. And moving down the line here, we have our specification toggle. So this is in a parent container with a class of car divider. And so we have an H6, which is one element, and then the button with an icon inside of it, which is another element. So what we wanna do is to have these pushed apart left and right. So first thing we need to do is to make this a flex parent. So we'll add the class of flex container. So making this a flex container will make these two elements sit side by side, which is great. Now we need to push them apart. And they also need to be vertically aligned. So let's start with that. So we'll make this align the middle. All right, so the align middle class, make sure that they're vertically aligned and now we'll use the align justify class. And with those two, now we have the setup that we really want. So now we have the toggle button on the right. We have this buy button that is much bigger than the other two and it's filling the width of the container nicely. And we have our product title rating section lined up properly with the price on the right and at the bottom. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with the Flexbox helper classes. They save you a lot of time and headache over using floats and then hand adjusting padding and margin. So really encourage you to use uh, Foundation's Flexbox helper classes to save you time and trouble. All right, that's it for this week. Hope you guys love the lessons. Make sure you don't miss the next one, so hit the subscribe button up above. And as far as the Foundation trainings that are coming up, I'll put the links down below so you don't miss those. Thanks, guys.